I wanted to share a bit more about the is language, which is an art language I created and continue to work on. Specifically, I wanted to offer a peek at how I use this constructed language to make art, which is why I call it an art language. When I work in is, it has an interesting effect on my creativity. It forces my mind to function in a different way. Today I'm going to show you how I made my most recent painting, which is of a mantis and a crow. This one, like all of my paintings, is comprised of poems in the is language. The poems are patterned throughout the mantis and the crow. For an introduction to the is language and its structures, you can click on the link below in the notes to watch a video called Creating the Is Language. Why a mantis and a crow? Because in 2010, I was visited by an eight foot tall praying mantis entity. And this artwork is a depiction, not of that entity, but it's inspired by that event. The crow is me. And the mantis in this painting is a depiction of the emotional experience of that encounter. You can hear that whole story by listening to the audio documentary, Man Meets Mantis. And that link is also in the notes below. When I'm making art in the is language, I start by composing the poem. This is not an easy or quick process for me. Creating new vocabulary in this language begins with sound and emotion. Uh, I spend a lot of time literally just listening and feeling. And slowly a word begins to bubble up in my body. It's tied to a feeling, and the feeling begins to take shape into an external form. That form is a combination of phonemes. The phonemes comprise the outside or body of the word, and the body comes with an interior corollary, which is like the within of the word. The inside is where the meaning resides, of course. Once those initial impressions become clear, I begin working in earnest on the various altitudes of its definition. As you'll see in that other video creating the is language, words in is have seven distinct altitudes of depth. They also have two directions at each altitude. So creating definitions and forms for one word involves 14 iterations. That's partly why it's a slow process, and that's also why words in is often do not have a translatable partner in English. Which is why I love working in it, because it shifts my mind into a new set of perspectives. Once I'm in there, it feels like a new interface with reality. Once the map of the poem is done, then I put it into the computer and create the key to the painting. And then I map the poem onto the composition of the visual component of the painting. This means determining which lines of the poem overlay to what parts of the visual art. It's an intuitive process and can be slow as well. Once that's done, I start working on the image, which is also slow. Are you noticing a theme? <laughs> I'm glad it's slow because it's very fun, actually. And once I'm in the flow, I don't notice it's slow. When the painting is done, it feels very much like it has an inner life to me. It is a presence. And I'm in relationship with that being. It feels like the poem has been encrypted or inscribed into me. Here's what this poem sounds like in is. Although, I want to be clear that even though I created this language, I have a very bad accent in it. Aupo neujau eid arushur. Aupo neujau eid aremi. Aupo neujau eid asotho. O ailed e ayushar arnoma. Arnomaje eno 
Shathumazhu, en mira oisil o dujau shethosu. Enchanted Patreon, sensual patrons, passionate StuartDavis.com, love Patreon sex patrons, fleshly StuartDavis.com, enlightenment Patreon, carnal patrons, naked Patreon, nude StuartDavis.com, peace Patreon, fulfillment patrons, insight StuartDavis.com, Manhood Patreon Womanliness Patrons Erotic StuartDavis.com Heavy Petting Patreon Non-Duality Patron Chasm Spasm Orgasm StuartDavis.com